Welcome back to Win Against Tide, Davey. Uh, g'day, Adrian. What a week it's been. It's been a, it's been a good week. What um, a lead up to this podcast it's been because you've become a local tuna legend. Oh, I don't know week. about that, mate. But Joey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Jo- Joey, Joey's back in today. And um, Joey has invented a tuna starter pack, which includes Vanessa Amorosi, which we'll talk about in depth soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, you know what? I just want to take this special opportunity, but uh, just I just want to shake your hand, yeah. Adrian. Can yep. I shake your hand? Yeah, you sure can. Yep. Oops. Oh no. Just gonna have the handshake. I'm just gonna just start. Let everybody know that's listening to Wind Against Tide that I've officially done it. I've taken out the tag. Tag it 100 oh, challenge no. because I've tagged <laughs> two tuna over 100 kilos. So I'm the penultimate champion. But haven't you said, jo- Joey, this, this was a captain's thing. Did you do it on your little 420 dory? No, no, no. It's my, my own private funds no. have, have chartered FV Extreme oh. to. Oh, uh, you have, you and forgot I've, to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> and I've, and I've, rented, I've rented Dave Standing as my skipper and he's um, successfully brought me to tag. Hang on. Haven't you tagged three yeah, over 100? Yeah, you already did it. Oh, I've, I've done shoot. two, but I didn't have a tag, so. I'm not going to count ah. the one. I didn't tag that one at Port Mac, but I tagged one at Portland Anzac Day long weekend with Davey, and we tagged um, a second one uh, off um, off the local waters of Western Port. Well, I've got to say, Joey, it is quite a feat. Like, it's very impressive. But there's been a lot of talk this year that the talk about barrels has actually downgraded to catching a couple of whiting. Oh, don't be silly, Adrian. <laughs> no, 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 you've done well, Joey. I'm very proud of you. Thanks, Mark. Like I've had a couple of failed attempts where Dave decided to kill one after three and a bit hours on the rod after we tried to let it go and then it gaffed itself in the in the lateral line. Yes, always my fault. <laughs> I know what you're saying about the tuna and I'm going to quote Davey again. Davey said to me at Port Mac, he goes, Joe, I could dangle my penis in the water and catch a <laughs> barrel. That's how easy it is. Look, one thing I will say is yeah. catching them here out of Western Port almost brings it back to being like the olden days when we used to have to work really hard to get a bite and add that to the difficulty of tagging one because we all know that tagging is a lot harder yep. than just slamming a guff into some meat. Well, I've got to say two up is very hard to tag and release a fish. It's easy, to, easy to jab a bent tag pole into one, isn't it? It is. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot easier to gaff and than to is. try. I guess be cautious with the gaff and just get it into the lip, which I saw footage of you, Joey, which was quite impressive. You took your time, and Dave looked quite distressed. What was going on? Well, we actually, did quite well. <laughs> yeah. Well, we we were we were stressing because look, we'd just seen the week before you you want a barrel, and we watched. You know, could see the line vibrating. Yeah, and, and it. Unfortunately, that, came yeah. unstuck, but we were getting that line vibration going on, so it was a tense fight time to see was the was the hook actually going to stick. Yeah. Well, we we have sort of just jumped straight into it. We haven't even filled everyone in really what happened. No, I just wanted to talk <laughs> Joey's starter pack because yes, that we're was gonna impressive. Get to that. We just, are going to get to that. He's yeah. a very he's a special kind of angler, Joe. And I'll give the folks at home a quick yeah, preview of what a starter pack is. But he's missing the Vanessa Amorosi CD. Now we're going to talk about that later as yeah. well. But so these are all items Joe left at my house after the trip, and I looked at him. And I thought, you know what? That is uniquely Joseph Fernand. It is, isn't it? Fishing, isn't it? Yeah. The snow gloves for his. His dainty little hands keep them warm when he's <laughs> gripping onto a steel bar. But it's just the steel bar, isn't it? It's nothing Apparently. else. No, yeah. you, they're very. I'll tell you one thing: those snow gloves are bad at operating zips on the clears of I the heard. boat, and they're they're basically no good for anything else. <laughs> no, there's no dexterity. So, Look, they're, so they're, 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 they're transit gloves. So I'm looking at the starter pack, and yep. you've got some seasickness tablets and some clear wipe for your glasses. So can you oh. open those packets with those gloves on? Um, yeah, look, you, you can, but look, those, uh, look, we can go through the starter pack. I'll just start off with those clear wipes. They're very, yeah. very special. They hold a special <laughs> place in my heart, those clear wipes. Yeah. There's nothing worse than traveling in the ocean and getting sprinkles of salt onto your glasses when you're trying to look for birds <laughs> and gannets. So, you know, yeah. I, I, I quite, I, I thoughtfully always ask my crew and I do it for myself. I go, Hey, do your sunglasses need a little bit of a freshen up? <laughs> you know, you, you just got dried salt crusts yeah. on your on your spotters or your Maui's or whatever. And I just I love that they're alcoholic uh, wipes, and 
you just got fresh glasses. There's nothing worse than having those crust crusties on your glasses and then it's like, oh, try and clean it with your T-shirt. And most of these fishing T-shirts are actually nylon. You just end up smooshing around the crusty salt in a big swirl around your glasses and make them worse. So I bring the alcoholic wipes for yeah. Well, really, that's a one percenter because if you can see through your glasses better, <laughs> you can see the <laughs> yes. birds better. Exactly. And possibly leads you to a hookup. Well, yeah, and Dave will tell the story way more in depth later, but, you know, we've seen jack shit for four and a half hours. <laughs> So, we, and, and then he actually spotted the work up in the distance, which was the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow that brought uh, the, the big local tuna. But, yeah, maybe if he didn't have fresh glasses, he might have not seen it. That's it. And uh, yeah. what else did we have there? In our well, well someone just mentioned here oh, in the screen got, here, yeah. someone said the starter pack is missing a boat, and that was rip-off records. No, that's, that's wrong. That's not what Joe brings to the <laughs> no, table. he doesn't. He brings his good looks and his food, good, yeah. good cooking food skills, doesn't he? Yes, so, so we provide the boats. Joe provides those things in the uh, aforementioned photo. And like Adrian just said, he is the foodman. Yeah. Um, there actually wasn't much cooking on last tuna trip uh, for various reasons. Yeah, <laughs> no, we'll go over soon. There was some, uh, well, why not go over oh, it now? Well, here we go. There was, uh, I like to hear. There was a bit of a roll on in the morning and uh, Joe was sort of having a little bit of a kip. Which is fair enough because he had a gig the night before and I think he got home at 2 a.m. Yeah. Yep, got home at 2 a.m., uh, met Dave at um, United Crib Point at quarter to seven. Yep, and uh, I think the lack of action in the morning combined with the lack of sleep sent Joe off, <laughs> drifting off into a daze. Which is quite understandable yeah. because 2 a.m., there's not much sleep and – when you hit the water, especially the open water, you become quite weary, don't you, Joey? Oh, you it do. wasn't weary. It's just you know, um, Dave, Dave's got a, you know a nice esky with a big, uh, big foam um, cushion, so it was just like a lounge. Yeah. So I was just, I just had <laughs> in my, the lounge bar. I had my ski gloves on and I had my uh, Aldi um, jacket on, and I'm just, I was just warm and just nice. I was just, <laughs> it was just, I was like a mum, mummy. <laughs> I was, um, I was a. Alarm because all I hear is, oh shit. And then I'm like, what? What's broken? What's happened? And, oh, then, no. and then he's up at the side of the boat and it's, <laughs> Joey. Yep. No, it was, it was Chandapal. Some very theatrical vomiting, I must say, Adrian. Oh, we've all seen it and done it ourselves. <laughs> Look, but... you, you try to keep it in for as long as possible. Like, I, I'm so picture me just lounging on yep. the, on the, on the esky. And, you know, we'd naturally, we'd started off in the location at, at Cape Woolamai, we thought we'd start off where we left off last time, where we saw the life, and we'd seen jack shit. We'd seen one seagull, one seal, one dolphin. So I just went to sleep, and you know when you're um, asleep, and it was probably about a two two meter swell, and I'm just horizontal like this. So just the whole contents of my stomach was just getting yeah. shaken up for about two and a half hours, dollar, and then I'm dollar. just yeah, and then um. You know, all of a sudden, you just get that awful saliva swill in the back of your palate, and now, now before you actually engage in the vomiting, do you try hold it in your throat for a couple of seconds and swallow it back down, or do you just go for the full chunder? I'm done. <laughs> no, no, I don't. It's sort of, it's more just. It's, <laughs> it loves it. It just. just... I, I was. I I um didn't have a great deal of um. What's the word, Joey? I, I didn't feel so, I didn't feel super sorry for him because I was just munching away on my chocolate bullets <laughs> <laughs> while he's while he's vomiting his guts up. I'm just standing there driving around eating eating my uh, chocolate raspberry bullets and um, just kind of showing no sympathy. Yeah, as you do because when you're on the tuna hunt, you you have one track minded. You don't care. <laughs> you oh, just no. got to find the fish. Now, Joey, did you eat before you vomited? Like, what was the Viscosity of the vomit was it? Of course, he ate it. It's Joe. No, it was so, it was so chunky you could carve oh, it <laughs> like a peanut butter crunchy. No, I had an I had an apple an apple crumble scroll um, as we were leaving Western Port, and I had a handful of chocolate bullets, <laughs> and I had a mocha, um, had mocha, a mocha. mochaccino from United. Oh, that will that'll do it. So it was just like a brown. Anything with milk it does not help the cause of seasickness. Yeah, I, it was I, just a brown chunky. Projectile. <laughs> I just knew something was off with Joe when he yeah. wasn't diving into the uh, esky constantly and uh, snacking. I thought, oh, she's not well, the boy. It, it got to 12, which is lunchtime. Yeah. 
and he still hadn't eaten. I was like, oh gosh. <laughs> but you know what it allowed me to do? It allowed me to go, right, while he doesn't have food everywhere. And while he's weak. And the action out here is not how I'd like it. I'm going to pull the gear in and go for a drive down the coast. Now, were you upset about this, Joey? No, no, I wasn't. Dave was like, he was thinking like I wasn't into it. I'm just like, but I, I can often be seasick and it's just like just – the mission is the mission. <laughs> just slam keep, it down. Just keep. I'm just like put everything like, on the like, table. Slam it down. Like I'm just like <laughs> keep going. <laughs> just like some kind of crazed tuna attic. Yes. So basically, um, like Joe said, we went back to Cape Wilmot, which is where we had uh, fish, and and um, there was fish caught the last time we were out. Yeah. And it looked okay, but not great. It kind of looked like if it had a like there was bait there, so yeah. if it had a livened up throughout the day. It could have been looking good the afternoon, but it sort of never got better. So I was like, "This, there's got to be better than this around." Oh, hundred percent. So we went for a run, um, and we went about we covered about twenty five, thirty k, and I'd I'd death spiraled. You, know? <laughs> you death spiraled. Yeah, you, you were. And I Joey had already to... spiraled on in the ocean. But no, you know, no. one thing I may death spiral, but I still go through the motions and I don't give up. Yeah, that's, and that's well one, done, that's babe. one of the <laughs> that's one of the secrets to um to catching big fish. Just outlast everyone else. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we spotted the pot of gold. There oh, was wow. um there was gannets and uh, all sorts of sea life, all the stuff you want to see just everywhere. And we, we how pretty many, much how many types of mammals are we talking about? Oh, seven. Seven. Um oh, this this is how I recall it. Dave goes, Joe, big work up um in the distance. All right, we could and see. And you've some... gone from pale to a bit of red in your Yeah, hair. we could we could see some gannets in the distance, get closer to the gannets. All of a sudden, it's seen a, a whale. And then all of a sudden there's three other packs of gannets littered out to the right. We get even closer to that and then we've seen baby whales and then we just baby seen, seen baby wheels. Baby wheels. Baby whales. Then we just saw like a spurt like 25 meters in the air like <laughs> 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 And then it's like we we put the spread out. Yeah. And then Dave. Wow, I've got a bit of a clip here, Adrian. If you want to throw it in my Mac. Yeah. Oh, here it is. So, up with the audio, sir. Yeah. You, fortunately, the audio on your computer's down oh, right that's low. Right. I can do that. <laughs> yeah. and, and as we. So here we are. How's that audio? Yeah, that's no, good. Right. Yeah. We've seen Jack shit for four and a half hours, and we see this. Yeah. We're on the. We've we've come into the area. Literally, just put the lures in. That's my sounder with two big marks on it. Right. Yeah. So that's barrels. We're just pointing that out to the camera. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Listen to that. Listen to that reel. That's amazing. Wow. We're on, Daisy. We're on. Incredible, guys. So, as fishermen, that is the moment that we dream of. Yeah. Um, absolutely. That's what we go out there for. Yeah. So, we were pretty stoked. And then, um, Obviously, the hard work began and we got on the rod. Now, with the rod, did you have a sniff at all, Dave, to have a shot at wine to get in? Or? No, he was on it. He was on it. He was on it like... Joey yeah, was on it like Donkey Kong. He was on it like a cinnamon scroll in the morning. Look, look, I'd, I'd love to see Davey wind one, but I need practice at driving his boat yeah. with, um, with, yeah. the, with the wheel. I'm used to just the, uh, the old, uh, what would you call it, the... Steering steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a steering wheel. Well, this, yeah. <laughs> no, it, Dave's got like the you know the seaman's wheel. Uh, you know, like old, old old sea dog of the ocean's yeah. wheel. Yeah, so need more practice. Big old that. wooden wheel. The thought crossed my head. You know, rough weather. Joe on the wheel it could end badly. So it's probably better if I did my job and he did his job because he's a well trained real winder these days. He's 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 a, a true blue barrelman. Yeah, very good, Joey. Now and, got, and you know what? I'm going to give that. The yeah, King Kong Donkey Kong. <laughs> I've given in King Kong Donkey Kong Fish of the Week. Week. That's fair enough. Well done, Joey. Thanks, now, to just Adrian. to just to wrap that little chat up. How about we? Um, I've got footage of the release here because this is probably the most important and yeah. enjoyable aspect. You want to throw to that computer? Yep. So, oh, that is a nice That's look it. at that. Now, she was swimming super powerfully. This it's off, fish. It's off now, look there. at it go. Oh, look at that power. That thing could have fought for another hour. Yeah, mate. She was very green. So, wow. Well worth jumping on the um the live stream and checking that out. Uh, on on the YouTube, sorry. Yeah, yeah. And rewatching that one later. Is, is that up? 
It's we're on the live stream, Joey. No, no, is is the the full video of no? no. Oh, oh. Yeah, mate, you, there's a few in line before yours. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's not all about you, you know. Oh, and by Actually, the by the way, that fish was very green, as Dave mentioned. Like we we had it um, under control with the lip gaff, and while Dave was unshackling me from harnesses and rods and whatnot, yeah, that fish it. Absolutely, was slamming my forearm against the yeah. against the side. Look, it's all right now, but I, I had like a whole bunch of uh, welts just from hanging on to that fish because, um, yeah, the the water was passing over its gills and it it was very very green. Look, we, yeah, it was a good candidate for relief. So uh, I I think fixed roofing said it's no sugar stack, so it doesn't count, Joey. Unfortunately, no, that's right. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah. We've done some good sugar stacking, man. <laughs> man, I fix. Oh um, yeah, that's the that's the ultimate quad stack of tuna on the bait board. It's a beautiful <laughs> yes. sugar stack. I think there's a photo of that on our yeah. Instagram. If people there want to is. go work out what we're referring to there, but yeah, possibly first tagged bluefin over 100 kilo out of Western Port. Are you going to claim that? I don't know. Do I dare call? Do we like Wind make... News Gippsland? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, we don't like we don't like to make big claims, but you know. If, yeah. if someone knows of another one, let us know. So, you know, yeah, I think it's a pretty cool achievement. Look, we've we've definitely tried. And you know what? When you try, you know, you set your heart out to tag one of these fish, all of a sudden the fishing starts to become a little bit harder. That's true. You start coming across things that wouldn't normally happen if you're just going to throw a gaff into it. Yeah, well, like the last couple before that have taken the lure deep and probably been not good. Yeah, um, not good fish the thing I love about the the tag and release of tuna is that if you're so lucky enough to be able to get onto a fish and knock it over in a in a ample amount of time, you, you can go you can go again. Yeah, um, very, very quickly you can reset the spread, and you know why not wind in two? Exactly. Um, you know we've got amazing technology these days. We've got you know iPhones, we've got GoPros, we've got there's lots of things to really enjoy that moment and. Um, still have a sense of, of, of achievement. No, yeah. good good call, Joe, and wonderful words. Spoken like a true gentleman of the sea. That's right. Now, I, keep, keep an eye out because we'll, we'll get that um, full episode up. I've we've got it all sitting there, ready to edit. I, yeah. I'd love to see um, the wind against tiders. Like if there was a barrel tagging releasing competition, how many people actually would enter that? Maybe we need to do our own one. Well, I could count them all in my one hand here <laughs> <laughs> because no, yeah, we, a lot of people like um, the taste of big barrel tuna. Yeah, that's right. We don't we don't want to be virtue virtue signals. We, we want to release, but you know it's up to everyone else exactly what they want to do. So I that's fair it, enough. It, oh, yeah, I love up. eating them too. Don't don't get me wrong. But you know what, Joe? It's nice to go home, slam that boat away, and go and pick up some nice commercially caught fish and chips and. <laughs> 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 I'm still I'm still drooling about those fish and chips. That Balnearing fish and chip shop, that was just sensational. Like mm. you, you think you've eaten a potato cake. You haven't <laughs> eaten a potato cake until you've had one from this shop. <laughs> now, was it, are they called potato cakes or potato, potato scallops? scallops. This, this was oversized. Oh, oversized. Like, like, it wasn't like in the palm of your hand potato cake. Like yeah. this thing was like this. It was more like, like, like they ran the, it was like the road hash, roller over it. It was like three hash browns with a road roller. <laughs> rolled over it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing fires gel up like good food, does it? Nah. Um, nah. Yeah. So if anyone wants to um, think of, if anyone can think of anything they want to add to the Joey Tuna Fishing Starter Pack, I think that's a, a, <laughs> a fun little game. Oh, um, by the way, by the end of the trip, Dave's like, oh, I've just added Vanessa Amorosi, absolutely <laughs> everybody to my iTunes <laughs> yeah. playlist. Well, I'll for, forever connect that song with that day now. That's Very it. good. And that's why we love music, Joe, isn't it? We do love music. It, yeah. It really, you know, brings into a, a custom, you know, of your memory. Like Yeah, it's not like that's what I would have put on in the morning if Joe wasn't there. Exactly. But he put it on and what a banger. <laughs> Smashing become... through the open seas with a bit of V Dog blaring exactly. through the speakers. Speaking of bangers, yes. We've created our own very trend with Mitch Chapman from the last podcast. That's and right. The Miley Cyrus has really taken off. It's gone viral. There's, there's been people tagging Mitch and tagging us in these um, Miley Cyrus banging fishing videos. Miley's sitting there at a mansion in Malibu going, good Lord, my streaming numbers have gone through the roof. <laughs> oh, and who's this guy? Mitch Chapman. He's tagged me in a video of him fishing. <laughs> yes. He also tagged us in the Starlo secret jizz sauce too. He did. <laughs> and, and Starlo 
probably didn't like it at all. <laughs> all right, you'd be proud that we're still talking. Any about. publication is good publication. No. Oh, no, Joe's sending things. He's sending photos. This is always a worry. He's sending photos. This is always a worry. <laughs> Mid-podcast, Joe starts sending things. Now, um, our good mate Simon Webster, who he passed when Joe starts sending things. Now, um, our good mate Simon Webster, who not only does our fishing reports, but throughout the week, you guys not, might not realize this, but he sends me a lot of podcast ideas. Yeah. Um, I know what you're thinking. I thought it was you, Dave. You're a genius. But no, he <laughs> sent me through a Spotify playlist he'd made, Wind Against Tide. <laughs> oh, no, he <laughs> did not. That is so, absolutely brilliant. There was some fantastic. So did. Uh, What's on it? Vanessa Morosi make the cut. I don't know if he was I'm, I'm aware sure, of that. I'm sure Miley made the cut. Because, Miley? Yeah. No, what? that's what I call her. Miley. Miley Cyrus. I don't know where you came up with that one from. I say it on the fishing boat all the time. Oh, do you? Um, there's, some, there's some good ones in there. There's one called Joey by Concrete Bond. Oh, yeah. You know that one, Joey? Yeah, Joey, baby. Joey, I'm not angry anymore. We do have absolutely everybody, Vanessa Amorossi, on there. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely everybody. Oh, Dave, Come on, Joey. Yeah, no, nah, we he is it out. Um, yeah, so there's that. There's Party in the USA, Miley Cyrus. Uh, there's a few others on there. The Climb, which I think I mentioned last week. One of one of the things I love about these these uh, song lists is like you know fishing is just such a macho <laughs> Isn't woodsman it? sport. <laughs> you go <laughs> listen to the akadaka yeah, and yeah, like you can, the, uh, uh, it, that's it, like real macho stuff. But then like you you know you go out into the middle of the woods or middle of the ocean, and then yeah. you've just got like all this real feminine light yeah, FM music. On. But you know <laughs> you know we love listening to Queen like if it's Bohemian Rhapsody or We Are the Champions. Like. Well, well, while we're talking about this. Everyone out there that wants to add to our Winning Against Tide podcast, let us know, uh, podcast, our playlist. Spotify playlist. Let us know what you think needs to be in there. Can you boys think of any other songs that we regularly play? Well, I like listening to Ariana Grande, um, Heatstroke. Driving That's, driving yeah. out to the old rigs while chasing Calvin swords. Harris, that was a big one. Ariana Grande, Heatstroke. That Harris, was a big one. Ariana Grande, Heatstroke. That's oh. right. Look, one of my all-time favourites was uh, the Luke Luke Million, the Arnold Schwarzenegger That's song. That's another one, and uh, we we had that one going on now. Another barrel we caught a big tuna not too long ago. Yeah, quick story about that one. So it's um it's Aussie artist. He's from South um, Australia, and he's into synthesizers and keyboards. And he's sampled Arnold Schwarzenegger from the movie Pumping Iron, where he's pumping iron. Yeah, while he's talking to <laughs> his his other mates in the gym and training them, and. Luke has just literally sampled Arnie going down. <laughs> up, yes. Down. Up. Well, we actually caught a local uh, very, battle playing that song. and Yeah, very relevant. Funny. Yeah. So, Simon's also got Everybody Hurts. That's for when you lose one, I think. Oh, yes. I've <laughs> lost just a few sobbing. local ones now. You're just oh. sobbing and you're like, everybody hurts. No, no. And to add to that, um, the Jimmy Barnes, there ain't no second prize. Yes. Yes. Because there definitely ain't a second prize when you're fishing. It's, Tell you, what. it's you win or lose. <laughs> That's it. Another good one is if you want to kill your crew. When you're driving really fast through the rough, oh, you, you uh, who on, does that, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> you put on Thunderstruck by yes. Hack Attacker. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's one way to make that right hand throttle arm get planted. And who does that? Adrian does that. Now, well, the problem is, like, when you, when you, you know, trying to punch through this rough weather, you don't want to come off the plane. So you got to keep at that steady pace where it's not hurting too much, but you're not coming off the plane. That's and, right, and you you understand that. It was quite rough that day after we lost that barrel in the 420. Look, let's face facts. We're going out there in a brim boat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's not calm. We are. Yeah, we fish in a brim boat. Basically. I love it. That's, that's determination. Sheer determination. Yes, it's determination and the fact that petrol costs so much. Oh, we yeah. take the fuel efficient. Well, I told you guys that Putin was uh, turning the Nord you Stream back on. bloody spot on, Joe. Isn't that? And the fact that petrol costs so much. Oh, we yeah. take the fuel efficient. Well, I told you guys that Putin was uh, turning the Nord you Stream were back bloody on. Bloody spot on, Joe. Isn't that gas, though? Look, I, I don't, <laughs> I'm not so sure, but up on just petrol's a dollar, about a dollar seventy a litre. We watched it go from two dollars eleven down to you know two dollars seventy one. It's, like it's like a dollar sixty now. There you go. Crazy. Either way, the timing is suspicious. Yeah, Joe's body. Joe's made that call, and then a week later, prices are down, down, down. <laughs> of course they are. Now, um, I was uh, checking out the uh, the news the other day, and you know what popped up, Adrian? 
what popped up, Davey? Uh, nine News have run a story. Nine um, News run an actual story. If you want to, yes, they have. If you want to wow. throw to my laptop. Who would have thought? So here we go. We have a Brisbane fisherman has had the catch of a lifetime over the weekend, catching a, gi- catching a giant 175-centimetre long bass grouper. 40 you know kilometres off point. Shut up, mate. I'm still reading. Off point lookout on North Stradbroke Island. Generally living 250 to 600 metres underwater, this monster catch was caught on 30-pound fishing line, estimated to weigh around a mammoth 80 kilo. Wow. That's, in, that's impressive. Now, the funny... Wow. That's, in, that's impressive. Now, the funny thing about this... Yeah. I mean, good capture. Well, you know what? I've always wanted to catch... I love big bass. Joey loves the ass, don't you? No, big ass. I don't like them. Oh, they you don't f- like big ass? Um, no, <laughs> okay, I've, I've, uh, I went fishing and... You lo- play the bass. I play the bass. I slap at the bass. But <laughs> no, let's talk about big bass. Yeah. Um, I've caught one on the jig at In- Lord Howe Island. Um, oh, Lord Howe? Yeah, Lord, Lord Howe Island. We was uh, jigging on a, a Ball's Pyramid and caught a big black bass. Would have been... 40 or 50 kilos, and, man, it's just like a freaking wet mop. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's balls period near fella. No, but hang on. <laughs> hang on. <laughs> hang on. <laughs> Let's straight over Adrian's head. No, because yeah. I'm talking about the taste of this fish, right? Oh, it's, so, a, it's fantastic. So, oh, you just said it was no good. Oh, I meant to, to fight. Oh, it's like, like a like wet. To, yeah. to, 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 for a sport. To it's catch, like a wet sock. Oh, it's a yeah. wet sock. Yeah. You know, like you'd have more fun catching. I've seen these guys fight these harpooka, which yep. is a similar, it's like a cousin of the, the bass, the bass basically, the mm-hmm. bass groper, and they look very similar. The only thing is that harpooka have a jaw that comes out a bit further and a little bit narrower, but apparently those things fight really hard. I've looked. I haven't. Well, I've caught harpooka. I went onto the Ranfurly Banks in New Zealand. Um, we went on a kingy liverboard charter with Brendan, and um, we did catch some harpooka. Absolutely, uh, yeah, delicious to eat. We didn't get any big ones, but um, look, they went all right. Okay, because um, they bloody taste good. I tell you what. Oh, fan, look, we were bringing in kingfish, and we were eating kingfish, which I love eating kingfish. Yeah. But once you put that next to harpooka. Yeah, the harp hooker just blew it out of the water. Like, I would have just been happy with eating kingfish. <laughs> yeah, right. The alarming thing about this story and why I brought it up was yeah. the, if you want to provide hours of entertainment to yourself, go find it and look at the comments because the general public seems to be getting more and more misinformed about where their food comes from and just having random opinions that they've decided are correct. <laughs> yeah, well. For, for example, you can throw it to my computer now, Adrian. For those who don't know... Queensland giant groper, which this is not one of, <laughs> yeah. and he said it with such confidence, yeah. are a protected species. <laughs> yeah. And he said it with such confidence, yeah. are a protected species. Brass gro- oh, no, actually, he's on no, the No, Queensland groper are protected species. Though. Yes, they are. Queensland groper. Yeah, but that's a bass groper. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. No, I've read the wrong comment. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I've got, I've got something to no, add. No, to no, that. no, no, this is yeah. like, I, I thought there's many that are like comments. <laughs> No, no, I've got, I've got something to no, add. No, no, to that. no, no. This is yeah. like I, I thought. There's many that are like I thought catching groper was illegal, stuff like that. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what I was trying as to get. Many species of he should like. be ashamed of himself. You know, I thought they were protected. Dave's got a message. I hope he let that go. Uh, things along those lines, misinformed <laughs> stuff. Look, have you, a quick question: You guys ever been to Hamilton Island? Yes. Oh. Yep. Yeah, did you? Oh, dare you. Have you in, seen in a, a tinny? We drove it across the thing to refuel a tinny and then kept going. Oh, well, if you stopped at the Hamilton Island uh, jetty there, there's yeah, like a... we filled up. Yeah, there's a giant potato cod that's about 150 kilos. It's like a resident there. I think they've named him. A potato cod at 150 kilos. Did they get that big? And, he's just, and he just stays in the harbour. And literally yeah. when the charter boats come back for the end of the day, they're, they're feeding him the fish scraps. And wow. he lives under the, the pontoons there. So, Incredible. Yeah, but yeah, that's obviously. Did you try to but... catch it? No. Nah. Be, the, be the community villain? <laughs> <laughs> Look, this ain't no stingray at Stony Point <laughs> boat ramp. <laughs> Who would catch a stingray at Stony Point, Joey? I don't know. <laughs> Who would do that? I've seen Adrian do it at Paddo River. But oh, yeah, <laughs> but we weren't targeting stingrays. Weren't we? No. I thought we were obviously <laughs> targeting the, uh, the elusive silver ghost. Ah, is that what we were doing? We had the silver keys out. Stingrays are silver. <laughs> yeah. right. well, they're actually called black smooth rays or something, aren't they? The ones we catch? Yeah, something like that. 
big dogs. They hang out at every boat ramp and now, snuffle up all the scraps. Now, nice Dave, you, you were telling me that Joey sends things mid podcast. Yes. Now, well, I'm going to show you what he's put up on the screen here. Here he is. Yeah. <laughs> so I was uh, lucky enough. I, I While I was fishing on Friday afternoon, I was, I was a little bit disappointed <laughs> because it was actually the day of – uh, Yaya and the boys fishing sale of fishing our ass. Yeah. Who were selling up a storm at the time. And I was really worried that I was going to miss out on um, grabbing a bargain. Look, I did send my friend to go and get me one item. But yep. once he successfully secured one item and told me how good it was, I went back Sunday to uh, go and get another jigging rod. Yeah. Which I went back Sunday to. Uh, Go and get another jigging rod, now, which I have brought into the studio, yeah. by the way. I have noticed that you're quite kitted up in someone else's apparel here. Now, you, you told me, guys, check out my hoodie. It's certified halal sheep wool. <laughs> 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 I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Joey, that usually you don't kill sheep for their wool. Well, we just shear it off in this still life. Yeah, you might have been able to bless the sheep before <laughs> shaving its wool off. I think you put, I think you bless the knife before you kill the animal. Oh, really? Normally, yeah. Oh. You know, while we were hooked up to this big tuna the other yeah. day, Joey's like, Dave, Dave, take a video for Yaya. Oh, take no. A video. I'm like, Do you have I'm, a video of Yaya? I've got the video, but yeah. it's basically just Joe fanboying. And I'm, I'm like, Joe, can we just land this fish of a lifetime here we've got on and not take videos every two seconds <laughs> other than the ones that were filming on the GoPros? That no, was good. It was uh, actually... Yeah, but I was, so I met met the boys. I met Yaya, um, nice fellas. Um, yeah, he'd he'd love to come on the podcast um, after his uh, rock star world tour of uh, Australia. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> he'd be a good character to get on, Joe. Well, apparently he's coming on. He's coming on. He's coming on. He's definitely into it. Well, he knows about it now. Yeah. So look forward to that, guys. And I spoke to uh, David Mean about getting the podcast on the Melbourne Boat Show this October. Oh, are you into that, Joey? I am. Is that actually happening in person? Well, well I, I asked him what's happening with the boat show this year because it wasn't on. Now it's on. We love our boat and show, it's, and it's at October, so it's springtime. And the and it's going to be an outdoor boat show. Nice. So it could be quite exciting. Is it still under? Oh, nego- it's, it's going to be outdoors. Yeah. Is it still under negotiation, or is it, is it signed, sealed, delivered? No. Well, we should. Try book a stool and make this happen. So what we need to do, we so the rough plan is we're going to go live for like eight hours, hours a day. Oh, twelve like hours a day. However long it's open for, and we're going to have a wandering Brian, yes. like a street talk. We're going to literally harass because we all know boat shows is just. Let's be honest, everyone Boring, goes there to stroke their egos. Yeah, and we're going to grab all, all the all the personalities as yeah, they go oh past. Oh my god, that car got forty whiting the other day. And we're, we're gonna, getting him on to talk about his and we'll, quad stack. We'll pit them all against each other. Yeah. And it'll, be, <laughs> <laughs> it'll be hilarious. Yeah. Um, now, now Joey's just um stretched across the room and grabbed one of his Yee rods. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna bend it live. <laughs> You're gonna bend it live. Yeah. Now Dave, can you please get up and bend it live? <laughs> You're gonna bend it live. Yeah. Now Dave, can you please get up and bend Joey's rod? He wants you to touch his rod and bend it. I'd love because to because it's quite straight at the moment and he wants you to release the tension of this straight rod. And he wants you to release the tension of this straight rod. It looks like a nice rod, Joe. It's oh. one of the best rods I've seen today. Now here we go. He's so bending it. It could break live on the potty. Look at that. Parabolic jigging rod. Yeah, I what thought you that? wanted a noodle rod. That's not noodling. Listen, he's made it pretty bending all the way <laughs> Dave's going to break the tip here. Look at his face. No, it looks like a good stick, Joe. Yeah. Do you reckon? Sean's chosen well. Oh, he's $29. <laughs> I'm glad he wrapped with that. Yes, Joe, it's going to do exactly what he wants it to. Looks really good, mate. And what's the other one? The other one. <laughs> He's got another rod. The other one is Joey. Um, bring your mic out because we can't hear. Yep. No, Sorry. it's it's all right. Other is a. Uh, I can't really see that. No, Where no, here, it's mate? a volatile <laughs> rod. It's yeah, saying it's volatile. I see a volatile, so I'm going to use this for casting a tuna. He's going to use it for really casting really a tuna, guys. <laughs> and um, <laughs> like we've got Adrian because Joe loaded. <laughs> Terabolic just, rod. Joe's trying to talk about five meters from the mic, so that's yeah. all we've got. Adrian <laughs> translating. That's but, cool, but yeah, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, so. someone 
uh, Kata One Productions has just wrote in on the live stream saying the boat show is at the Docklands. So anyone wants to help us or you know give us a hint of how we get our own stall at the uh, boat show, it'd be much appreciated, wouldn't it, Joey? Yeah, love a good boat show. But you'd be working at the boat show. That's all right. You can be wandering, Brian, if you like. I'll the street talk. I'll even get my real estate open for inspections covered <laughs> yes. for that day. There you go. It's a weekend. It's a three day thing. Can yeah. you do that? <laughs> it's Why not? I'll do them for you. <laughs> I'll go well. It's old. <laughs> um, Adrian. Yes. I've got a little bit of a grinds my gears, and I think it should grind everyone's gears. Oh, here we go. Everyone. Oh, what did I do Talk last Peter time? Griffin for you know what really grinds my gears. And Thanks, Cam. You know what really grinds my gears? The sound bite gets me every time. <laughs> I forget about the second half. <laughs> um, it's not Joe this time. Oh, Joey didn't, you know, change his pants Joe, in the car actually, he, he, he did on our last fishing trip. He didn't piss me off. <laughs> he didn't. Very much. Maybe because he was seasick and he couldn't move and he was just <laughs> hanging on for dear life. Yeah, he was a good teammate. <laughs> so what it is is uh, VR Fish have put this up. So if you want to quickly. Oh, dear. I did computer. hear about a VR fishing incident. So we. Ha- so if you want to quickly. Oh, dear. I did computer. hear about a VR fishing incident. So we. Ha- uh, not so much an incident, but. I'll quickly read through it. More, so more, out, a lefty, out, more a lefty thing happening. Outrage as regulations push to ban kids fishing. Uh, not so much an incident, but I'll quickly read through it. More, so more out, a lefty thing happening. Outrage as regulations push to ban kids fishing in local, par- local parks. Can you believe that? VR Fish is outraged at proposed regulations by the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning, DELP. Scum. <laughs> Dave, come on. <laughs> Set to ban kids and families, recreational environment, land, water, and planning. Delp. Scum. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, come on. <laughs> Set to ban kids and families, recreational fishing in metropolitan lakes and rivers. Yes. They Even released... though they've been heavily stocked by the government's own money. Yes. <laughs> so they've been stocked. Its own money. Yes. Recreational fishing money, which was part of the campaign to be elected in the last election. Yeah. Target 100, all that stuff. Target 100. <laughs> this is target 1 million. <laughs> they stole your target yeah. 100 thing and turned it into target, target 1 100. million. And we turned it into target. So target 100. all this money's been pumped into stocking these areas. And now, for God knows what reason. Yeah. That I, poor little kid, look at him. He's so worried about not catching his trout anymore. Now, a bunch of Karens must have complained that there was kids having fun fishing or something. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so what we need to do, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so what we need to do is everyone needs to fill out a survey, which there is a link to on the VR Fish page. A survey. Let the Premier know how out of touch his environment minister. <laughs> I think everyone's let the Premier know how to, <laughs> out of touch he's been in the last two years. Where is he? I, haven't, I think he's hiding already. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lily D'Ambrosio is with Community Values and opposed this blatant attack on wreck fishing. Okay. So we're encouraging people to email <laughs> Danny, Danny Andrews. Um, Danny Andrews. Um, and Minister for Fishing and Boating, Sonia Kilkenny. So, <laughs> Sonia Kilkenny. Um, yeah, both is she are... the one advocating all this? I, I, I don't know where it's come from, but um, it's to... both of those politicians. Have you? Sonia story. and Dan. No, no, no Sonia and uh, Lily. They came out the front of my property when we uh, had the Channel Seven News, and your name was jo- Joey Fernando. That's uh, right. We yes, played right. that on the podcast, Joe. <laughs> Joey, Fern- jo- Joey did. Fernando. I didn't know that was your name. You yeah, know, they came and did the media announcement there. So yeah, yeah you obviously spelt your name out for the Channel Seven I News, did, and they still spelled it wrong. Well, before they started actually going live, they're like, "All right, I'll just get you to say your name and spell it out nice and clearly for me." <laughs> And mate, I did it. <laughs> you, made, you didn't spell your own name right. I spelled it right. <laughs> <laughs> Typical media. Yeah. Twisting the truth. So, yeah, that should outrage everyone, that little uh, that little excerpt from VR oh. Fish there. Yeah. Get into Dan and Sonia. I wonder, I wonder why. Look, you can't help but think why maybe it came to that decision. Like, is there a, is there a handful of ratbag kids that were bad no. in the waterways or what, you know? 
Mm. Like I said, I bet you it's just some Karen who wants to walk her, her precious poodle thing or something around there and don't, doesn't like kids with fishing rods, something like that. <laughs> That's true. That is so, true. Well, do you know what really grinds my gears? Oh, Joey's got to grind my gears. Here really he grinds this- my gears. <sighs> I was uh, reversing the, the boat trailer in the dark to collect uh, Dave on um, – on Friday night. Oh, yes. And, uh, I've never seen Joe so angry. He tried to start a fight. Yeah. Oh, no. well, Did someone leave the headlights on, Joey? Not just, Spoiler alert. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, you know, Dave's got a freaking fairly expensive trailer and I didn't want to explode his trailer lights into a bunch of confetti, plastic confetti, because I have done that before. Exploded a trailer light on the timbers of a of a ramp. And yeah, I've been it does really, sound like something you'd do. Yeah, I was being really careful with his trailer because some dickhead... <laughs> <laughs> had his LED LED lights um, on, and yeah, I was I couldn't. How bad reverse down the, the middle LED ramp? Lights? Probably. Oh, they're very bright, yeah. Adrian. So, I hate yeah, it. Turn turn your headlights off when you're at the boat ramp, please. Some people are going to say, you know, Joe, you know uh, Peter Ferguson leaves his on. Because he can't turn them off on his Jeep. Yes, I was going to say, some cars you actually can't turn them off. No, but it's just the driving lights. But they're still quite bright, those driving lights. Especially when they're on an angle straight up. But the funny thing was about this guy that Joe was getting mad at, he just did the old completely ignore us. (laughs) (laughs) Dave Dave was in the boat like yelling to him, mate, your lights. And I'm just like, hey, mate, he can't back down. Because he sucks. No, because <laughs> he can't back down because your lights are on. And he's just ignoring me. Yeah. I'm like, all right, no worries. One way to handle it. Yeah, I normally yeah. just yeah get upset while I'm reversing and go, Dave, can you believe it? I couldn't see what I'm doing because someone had their goddamn lights on. And they just look at you like, oh, oh. What yes. grinds your gears this week, Adrian? Not a lot, actually. I've had quite a good week. Um, Feeling grateful. Feeling happy? Yeah, yeah. As good as you can be, Joey, in the current circumstances. But yeah. Yeah. Um actually haven't much, had much tick my uh tick my gear off. Un- <laughs> un- tick your gear off. He's got unground gears this week. <laughs> yes. Very good. How about we throw to our reports? Because I've got a few now. Oh, you got some reports. Oh, I know what's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the hookup. <laughs> Joe loves that little. Yeah, he, he actually does. I really bite. want to get some more sound bites, um, executive producers. Yeah. So we can put that on the wish list. Okay. I yeah. agree. Yeah. We need more. And you know what? The man with the soulful voice, Luke McCredden, has offered to do some for us. Oh, excellent. So I think we should take him up on that. Yeah. Um, so we're going to start off with Simon Webster. Yes. What's with he got the Gippsland for us? report. Here we go, boys. Black brim have been a little harder to pin down over the last week as these fish seem to be constantly on the move. Most anglers are targeting the Nicholson, Mitchell, and Tambo currently. Smaller model fish in the 28 to 32 centimeter range are being sounded in larger schools and being caught on heavier vibes and scolded soft shell, whatever that means. Bass, yabbies, and worms. Adrian's just leaving the studio, everyone. He's tried to do it sneakily, but I'm going to... Might have had explosive diarrhea. Yeah, certainly. We can only assume that's what's happened, Joe. He's gone out to have explosive diarrhea, possibly at both ends. We all listen very carefully. Oh, he's back. That was quick poo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the big dogs seem to be hanging in smaller groups of two to five fish, so anglers targeting them will bypass the schools to get the larger class of fish. Eagle Point Bay has also seen a few nice fish taken from the silk jetties. Some larger schools of yellow-eyed mullet have entered the Mitchell as these fish annually come out of the salt to de-lice in larger groups. We should see some. Oh, the de-licing. The de-licing. I hate hate louse. Yes, you've got a few. We should see some fishing to be had on floats soon for the mullet. The odd bass has also been (laughs) The old bobby flake. That sounds like good fun. The old cork bob. The old bass has also been landed in the Mitchell recently on earthworms. Highway bridge pylons and natural timber always seem a priority to sound and consistently seem to hold good fish. Both EPs and brim are being landed currently. The entrance at Lake's entrance remains open with the upper reaches of the now and hour arm seeing some nice fish landed. Some good flatties, you reckon? I know a few flatty fishermen have gone up that far. You think it's more of a summer thing, the flatty dogs? I don't know. Man. I did see a couple of good ones out of uh, Lake Tyres. Yes. Many of these are being taken on 40 millimeter crank baits. Joey's trying to open the beer and he's over structure. 
the water at now and now our ramp has been low and boaters must avoid rocks with propellers when launching. The main lake is still producing a few fish, but also has been slower. Lake Tyres also recently saw the return of Flathead Fred. Oh, yes. Good old Freddy. Oh, Freddy. Big, is he a big flathead? They've named one flathead called Fred, have they? No, it's a man. Oh. I've got a sample of... Is that like Flatty Rob? I've got a sample of the old Flatty Dog Fred. you got a picture for me, dear. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. There he is in all oh, his glory. Wow. Holding oh, up. And he's got a mega Jew as well. That's impressive. Uh, I don't think that's him. It looks uh, like Warren Carter. Is it? With, with the mega G? Nah, it's not, is it? No. Yeah. Um, and a good and a big blue lip uh, brim. Yes. That flathead would be amazing in tossed into some hot oil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they don't hey, hey, They've already bred for a long time. For a long time. Maybe let the small small ones grow a bit bigger. Hey, <laughs> right. Let's not get into that. Scientist jelly. Now we better take and release the big ones. <laughs> <laughs> So many middle-aged anglers would remember Flathead Fred as the guy always on magazine front covers with the monster crocs and one of the first to use the early Mr. Twister soft plastic successfully. Oh, Mr. Twisties. Smaller brim and pinky, smaller brim and pinky snapper are up for grabs around some of the meat tongue jetties with a bigger fish falling to the cranker crab fished in tight to structure. Soft plastics around jetties in Painesville still providing some action. With one angler recently catching his second golden tag fish and one angler recently catching his second golden tag fish not far from the Esplanade. Esplanade. <laughs> I believe he'd be the first angler to catch two. Oh, he said that two was... golden tags. This kid's got two golden tag rims. Yeah, that's crazy. Are they, so they're ten, both are they 10K each? No, four grand each. Four grand. Wow, this wow. kid has made more money in fishing than I ever will. Oh, meanwhile, <laughs> we've blown about $8,000 on fuel chasing um, tuna. Yeah, more than that. That's like a <laughs> weekly uh, fuel bill on Chasing the Tuna. <laughs> My wife listens to this. Oh. Shh. No. <laughs> no, it's not really that much. Just uh, joking, but not really. Six Mile Reef off Lakes again produced some snapper and mowong over the last week Mo-wong. on so love pillies Mo-wong. and squid. Frank Molito from Bass Strait Bait and Lakes has sent in a few update pics of the gantry as well. Yeah. Let's see, pick it. Uh, I'm not ready, Adrian. This is too hard. I'm trying to do everything. Um, anyway, there's gantry photos there. I can't be bothered getting them. Did they finish it? Uh, yes, it's so it's there oh. and ready to rumble. So the big Excellent. 40, 50 foot boats can now weigh fish quite easily now. Oh, Brendan Thanks. and Pawsey might take their, their boat out of uh, me, Tony. No, and Brendan's boat and Pawsey's boat and Josh's. <laughs> and Josh's. Yeah. <laughs> the team boat. The old, the old boys. That's the old right. boys' garage. All right, I finally got. The photo up. Have we got of. an update of Old Boys Garage? They've, they've done some quite good builds this year. I don't know, but I've got the gantry photo up. Oh, you got the gantry. It took me a while. This oh, is... wow, that is stunning. Look at that tinny trying to weigh its swordfish. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're going to weigh the tinny. Oh, yes. That's a great that's idea. a practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, possibly. So, yeah, that's uh, the report from Simon. So thanks very much for that he one. Give some On great detailed fishing report from uh, Gippsland, like... We have like a very undetailed fishing reports from our own fishing. Yes, I know. Um, now we've got our Tassie one from Jonah. Do oh. you, did you want to read that one, Adrian? Is it on our messages? Yeah, it's on our messages. I certainly can because it touches on a subject which I kind of brought up where um, the client owns the brown trout. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, I can't wait to read that. Oh, oh really? Yes. Oh, I can't wait to re- in the report saying the tuna fishing along the east coast of Tasmania has continued to fire with reports of n- numerous school fish in the 15 kilo size class being caught. I wish we had fish around that size again so I could finish my damn tag, tag at 100. Well, you- and they're all getting caught around the Tasman Island over the weekend. No sign of any big fish for now, not for a few weeks, but. A school could pass through at any given time. There is still plenty of bait down there. The inshore bottom snippers are still reporting good numbers of striped trumpeter as they begin to move into the shallows. To, as they begin to move into the shallows to spawn. Now, these fish, these striped trumpeters, they actually have a closed season. Can you believe that for an oceanic? I can because wow. they're they're being left alone to breed. Yeah, but unlike ha- our snapper, many, which we how many us. oceanic fish like that live in the ocean have closed seasons? Is there many? 
Oh. They're a while. If you go to WA, there's heaps of closed seasons. Crayfish? Like offshore, like. Yeah, offshore. Yeah. Talking about like international yeah. waters. South basically. Australia has closed seasons. Cray- cray- crayfish? It's actually basically. No, crayfish is normal though because they bury, you know, they're in berries. Snapper? So. Snapper should be because uh, South, South Australia. Australia there is well, South Australia. There is but in they Australia. were in dire. Like those fish stocks were in dire straits. Basically. Not us. We wait until <laughs> they come into shallow harbour estuaries yes. to do their breeding and yeah. then we pounce and wipe out as many <laughs> as possible. Yeah. Um, well, I think we're like one of the only states that don't have closed seasons. I think in WA it's quite strict actually. It's yeah. like full demersal fishing bans. So any of those bottom dwelling fish, Adrian. Yeah. And the big fishing news in Tassie this week, guys, is that the opening of the brown trout season. Yes, is I've got a photo up for you. You got a photo. Check check this big boy. So here's Jonah in his fisheries uniform. Oh wow. Of the brown trout season. Yes, I've got a photo up for you. You got a photo. Check check this big boy. So here's Jonah in his fisheries uniform. Oh wow. Conducting fisheries. <laughs> yeah, things. Two, there's some chunky trouts in that net. Yeah. So so that I think that's one trout, Joey. There's a 10 kilo brown. No, yeah, there's two trout. There. <laughs> there is two trout. But many keen anglers will be braving the elements this weekend in search for tangling with the elusive and Billy yeah. Queen. Oh, Wiley's Queen fish. Sorry. I said Billy. <laughs> <laughs> if it, Free <laughs> if it wasn't, did you call them queenfish? Yeah, that's what Jono called it because she owns the brown trout. Oh right, they've released the the queen brown trout. Oh right, they've released the the queen the queen bee. Yeah, yeah. So to be killed. Yeah, and Jono <laughs> says if he wasn't working, he would be heading straight to Lake Crescent, the lake of the barrel trout, with many fish over ten kilos pulled out of there. A t- wait, a 10 kilo brown trout. Yes, they certainly do. Didn't you see the wow. hook on that thing? The, the hook in the jaw. The snoot. Yeah. They're quite impressive fish. They certainly are. Um, yes, but that's the end of his um, report. Um, that was a nice report. Thank you, Jonah. Yeah, it certainly cool. was. Now, to jump over to. But yeah, that, that's one of his fish. But look at the snout on that. It's got a hook jaw. Got it's a, bait in its mouth or something. They're too. basically something they're too. basically all dressed up with nowhere to go. Like they go into these spawning tanks. <laughs> and do they have any like mountains to climb or not really? In their spawning tanks. Yeah. <laughs> no, I would imagine it's like a little pool thing. Oh, a little pool thing. They're just there to do their business. Yeah. So nice. thanks, thank you for that report, Jonah. I've got one from Southwest of Vic come in from Luke Smith, first time contributor. Now, buckle up, boys. This is a good one. Oh. So from WA, did you say? No, from Southwest Vic. Southwest Vic. Well, it's only taken about three months, but the barrels are finally slowed down at Port Mac. Oh, wow. No. (laughs) Sounds like if you dangled your penis in the water there, you probably wouldn't catch one now. How long? We were lucky enough to get one a week and a half and catch one now. How long? We were lucky enough to get one a week and a half ago on a live yakka, but it was a slow bite. The quality is still there, though, with one fish going 140 kilos. That's a mega dog. There is still some fish there. Joe's fish was like 200 kilo. I did see. And nobody can a, prove that it wasn't. 138 kilo caught off Portland um, this week as well. Yes. There is still some fish there, but they just aren't in the same numbers that they have been for so long. Mm. Trolling Skirts has been getting some fish along with drifting live baits. At Nelson, the broom have been going pretty consistently with good bags being caught on both lures and bait. There's plenty of mull away in the river. However, they have been patchy to catch. Fishing both down the front and Taylor Strait has been producing decent fish to a metre mark. Fishing baits through the night is always productive. However, it's cold as F this time cold of year. As Anything fresh is worth a shot, but calamari and mullet are hard to beat. Oh, yeah. I love a good fish of calamari. That's right. Uh, Are we going calamari fishing again, or is the local scene too hot on the tuna for us to go? Uh, I would like to go, Adrian. No, I've got an itching for some calamari yeah. too. I bought some new jigs, but we'll talk about that later. You, no, we won't. Sounds boring. <laughs> 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 no, we might. Um, <laughs> the school tuna of Dindar. Don't worry, Joey. Board. I'll take you out. However, there's still fish about. No, that's not the fishing's boring. Talking about Joe's purchasing of jigs. Oh. Yes. Um, yep. Tuna have thinned out of Portland. Uh, Sharkman fishing charters have been smashing it this year and have been getting fish out wide from 120 meters to the shelf lately. Uh, the weather has been <laughs> super shit <laughs> over the last week. It's been windy. It's, been it's very windy. Has. It's been windy. It's been wet. It's been wild. That's right. So it's made offshore missions very Sounds hard. Like a porno. Yes. 
Sounds good. We'll check that one out later. <laughs> the gummies and school sharks fire at this time of year and are definitely worth a crack if you don't want to chase the tuna. The locals have also been smacking some seven gill sharks off the break wall if that's what you're oh. into. Yeah. Jonah's into six gill sharks, believe it or not. He rates them. Right. Remember he tagged one uh, this year in Tassie? Yes. And and he showed me the thing. I go, huh, just a pesky seven gill. I don't he think goes, it was no, this look year. at it close. Yeah, it was earlier this year, wasn't it? Uh, I, I know he tagged one some time ago yeah. for his scientific all stuff. Um, so, yes, the rest of the report basically says there's snapper six kilo being caught on micro jigs off Port Ferry oh, this week. Oh, I'm into that. Uh, along Ooh. with Nanagai and Latchet, which are fine Gurnard, aren't they? Is that what they are? Latchet. They're the carrots, are they? Yes, those things, those delicious looking things. I love a good carrot. Uh and that's where I might wrap it up because it's quite a long report and there's about another half to go. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty, no, that's, that's pretty in de- detail. So thank yeah. you very much, Luke. I did mean to get through it all, but we've had some cracking long reports this week. <laughs> yeah. I think we wanted to get through it a little bit. We just up. loved Joey's vomit report. It was great. Yeah, the vomit report was nice. Um, yeah, so other than that, we've got – I'll quickly run through our local scene. There's been a couple of snap record in Western Port, so that's – only going to get yes. better from here on then. Yeah, here absolutely. On August is normally a good fishing month. It is. Just as they come in, they get hungry, then they shut off for another month. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Western Port and Port Phillip Squid. So as we come into spring, there'll be a major spawning event for them and they'll be ripe for the picking. And you know what comes with those snapper? Um, right after them, the mega skil- juice. Oh, I was going to say school sharks. No, no, no. I was going to say eagle rays. <laughs> oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Relentless eagle rays. That's right. Uh, the whiting in southern Pet- Port Phillip Bay have been quite good if you fish shallow water on the sandy, sandy weedy patches. Um, the yellowfin up the east coast have been good when the weather's allowed boats to get out. A lot of fish getting caught on stick baits and also the uh, trolled pro fidgies. Oh, yeah. Um, the Alabama specials. Local gummies and schoolies have been going all right. Port Phillip Bay garfish. And they just, still go on the gars. They, they love it. Mate. The baby marlins. People love them as well. They taste good. Good bait. Um, and Port Phillip Bay gars, that's a good thing to do with your kids as yeah. well. Non-stop yeah. action. And just to finish, trout and salmonoids in the crater lakes if you can the handle salmonoids. the cold. Joey's into the, the salmonoids. I'd love to catch a Chinook, the Chinook. Chinook salmon one day. When you, you Rem, it be... reminds me of the military helicopter, the Chinook helicopter. <laughs> Fair enough. I think this is Joey's last podcast for a while, isn't it? Yep. I'm um, I'm off to Thailand on Sunday for five Specifically nights. going to ping pong shows, nothing else. <laughs> I'm going to uh, Cheatman's Pond, according to Brendan. Cheatman's Pond. And you know what? When when you mentioned that to Brendan the other night, he actually said, oh, yeah, I'm going to take Finn there. Sounds great. He did, actually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it uh, sounds like a fun trip, Joe. Hope you've um you gonna take you gonna get some footage? Yeah, hundred percent. I've got um I've got a cousin traveling with me who's um who owns a drone flying company. And, oh um, wow! So yeah. it could be quite exclusive. Yeah, it could be. Footage. Could be very exclusive footage. And it should. Be so what's wonderful. he gonna get? Some drone of the pond. No, he's got some drones and he's got some uh, I think some SLR cameras. So yeah, we're gonna be going for some National Geographic stuff. Oh wow! I look forward to that. I can't wait till you catch some. Gurneds and some barramundis and okay. <laughs> oh, I, and I can't wait to film um, this particular fishing park. There's um, feed the arapaima pond where they're literally just fattening up the <laughs> arapaimas to be released into the bigger. Oh lake. wow! And yeah, it's literally a sign that says feed the arapaima, and just like people walk past it all day and just chuck <laughs> pellets, and you just hear like like Oof. several gunshots Oof. just going off. It's like. <laughs> Yeah, it's, right. it's crazy. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So, I look forward to exclusively getting all the footage. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a Windy Tide production with that footage, Joey. Yes, me too. <laughs> we'll do one from each of our perspectives. Yes. Um, yeah, so that was the reports. Look forward to seeing that footage from you, Joe. Uh, do we want to check out a couple of questions we've got? Co- yeah, yeah, we've got a coming? few questions coming through. Well, I don't know about a few. There's some. There's some there, Adrian. Yeah. Now, the first one is uh, from Ryan P.I. Yes. What's he saying, Davey? Is Dave's biggest life regret filming a U-Fish episode with Winger and Co. chasing whiting? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. I actually enjoyed. Did you film an episode chasing whiting, did you? I must have. I actually enjoyed. Did you film an episode chasing whiting, did you? 
I must have. Oh. There was one where me and Winger caught Whiting specifically to cut them up and throw them to snapper for bait. <laughs> yes. One tea tree competition and it worked extremely well. We caught a lot of big snapper on them. So I'm oh, not God. sure if that's what he's referring to, but there's also been times where we've gone out with Joshy and Pawsey on their annual pre-Christmas whiting harvesting where yes. they do multiple trips for Christmas Day lunch <laughs> and that's quite the experience. <laughs> Watching them, they don't fire up very often, those old boys, but when there's whiting fillets to be to be grabbed, they suddenly burst to life. Yeah, yeah uh, right. That when when a whiting slings into the boat, like they count they count the whiting by the fillets. Oh. Like, oh, yeah, there's two fillets. <laughs> there's four fillets. There's six fillets. <laughs> would, won't that um, you know, make their bag limit smaller if they're counting them as double? Shouldn't they be saying that's half a fillet? No, they just divide. They just divide yeah. it at the end, Adrian. But it's okay. we call it meat lifting, meat harvesting. Yeah, grocery shopping, as you. People in Florida would like to say groceries. Yes, that's right. Um, yeah, so yeah, I, I, didn't just, mind I can it. just picture Pawsey now, just like, oh, Joey, we hosed them. <laughs> whiting <laughs> hosing, <laughs> I believe. We hosed yeah. the whiting. <laughs> that's right. Because there is a few questions about whiting with you, Dave. Because the reason why you're holding this whiting here, and you like to tell people how much you hate whiting. I don't. So there's quite a few That's a misdirected questions with Whiting and Dave. I've been waiting to charter FV Extreme just for Whiting. I, d- I don't know where this hate Whiting thing came from. Maybe oh, because yeah. I say it all the time. Yeah. But no, I don't actually hate them. And we just like chasing things yes. that can pull string on reels. I just am. I love the blue water. Yeah. So I'd rather be out there. That's about all there is to it. Yeah. But I do like eating Whiting. Don't like fielding them. So it's not hate for them. If you have a good knife, you go. <laughs> Off, done. Yes. Well, I'll let you do the <laughs> knifing. Um, yeah, so we've got uh, TB2F. Yeah. Is what's that he... Dave's whiting in the photo? It sure is. Sure is, Phil. That is my whiting. It's his favourite fish besides tuna. Yes. Do you want to read the next one there, Adrian? Yeah. Question from Simon Webby. So he's saying, with attractants being heavily used by lure slash soft plastic fishermen, is there any merit... <laughs> using attractants, attractants, et cetera, like Starlow's secret jizz sauce, Dave. There may be. Yeah. There may be. There was a lure company called... Um, on your on your troll's um, skirted lures, that's what he's... Yeah, yeah. There was a company to. called Scent Blazer, I think it was. Oh, they wow. They were making these lures and they had like a little cage behind the head that you put like burly in. Yeah. Um, so this may be more of a Marlin thing. Yeah, and okay. I'm sure Tuna would get... The, you know, they, they smell the oil and stuff in the water and know there's a kill going on. So I'm sure that they yeah. um there's also some really cool footage that would be worth checking out. Yeah. Um, for anyone. Uh it's uh Matt Watson from New Zealand did some experimenting with Marlin on the Wanganella banks. Oh wow, yeah. Because you know where there's a lot there. Yeah. Shit tons oh, of Marlin. Yeah. Wow. So you people can't catch experiment. like people catch like sixty stripe uh, Marlin a day there. Have you mm. seen the Wanganella banks? Yeah. It's literally in the middle it's of lit. nowhere. It is lit. Yes. It's in between like Lord Australia Hank. and New Zealand, basically. Isn't it? No, no, New Zealand and the Pacific Ocean, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it like New Zealand and Lord Howe? It's close, yeah, closer yeah. to Lord, Lord Howe. Howe's, right. Lord Howe's Australia. Yeah. Anyway, we clearly have no idea. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but what gonna, he did I'm was. I'm going to YouTube that later. I'm going to yes, banks. Good viewing. So he stitched some uh, fish fillets into the skirt and they filmed underwater and watched the marlin grab the skirt. And the marlin actually held on to the skirts with the fillet in it for they were hookless by the way. Yeah. Held onto the skirt for much longer than they did for the just the standard plastic ones. Is that why a lot of people are going to using swim baits instead of skirts? Because like anything they grab if it. they if they can taste and you know, like we do with Marlon, we live bait them because they once they touch it, they swallow it because they can taste it. No, no, because the other side of it is if you're hooking them on a skirt. They're hopefully only going to grab it once, especially tuna, which are just inhaler feeders. Like they, they usually just come through and engulf the bait or lure. Yeah. So by the time they've worked out it's rubber, your hook should be set. Yeah. Well, you hope so. Yes, that's right. Mind you, I have watched big tuna in the spread come back and whack lures a few times. Yeah. So, yeah, there, there is. I think there's merit to um to sense. Yeah. I don't think I, you I often hurt. think about running a sword bait down deep and having a little bag of like tuna oil and just poking a little hole so it just leaves scent as you're drifting. Would well, you know what some people do in New Zealand? Yeah. They get a paint roller <laughs> and just soak it in tuna oil and not then put bad. a skirt over it and that's literally their bait. That's not bad. Well, yeah. in, in Florida, these guys put like 
fluorescent dye on their squids. Like they turn them into like red and stuff and make them glow a bit. I wonder if that dye has scent in it too. Maybe. We need some some stiffy stiffy juice. <laughs> yeah, some secret juice sauce. Stiffy juice game fishing scent. Some S Factor juice. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that'll be at next year's after. Yeah. Well, someone did say are we going to after this year? Yeah, well it's uh it's on right now, isn't it? Yeah, in the Gold Coast. So. No, nobody invited us. I don't think we're I really think a in the couple of industry. our mates. Uh, <laughs> well, we could create some kind of tackle and get involved. That's right. Yeah, we've got Mitch and Luke up there. Yeah, up there running yeah. a muck. Yeah. Apparently they're working. Yeah. Quotation Sounds marks. like they just wine and dine each other. It and does sound kind of like an excuse to go up and get pissed. Yeah, with your mates and leave yeah. your family at home and go. Oh, so hard working oh, this week, darling. Sorry. Just, oh, I wish I wasn't. <laughs> I wish I was home with you right now. As Next they minute, they, they hang up in the 20 schooners down. and yeah, They're up there in Sin City living it up. Oh, yeah. No <laughs> doubt. Vice City. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that's it. Oh, apart from one more. When's, when's Dave going to appear on Wicked Tuna with all the tuna he's caught? Uh, also, will any of you boys be braving the rain and going out for a fish this weekend? Possibly. You might. I'm eyeing off What's Sunday maybe. Right, oh. In the 420. But I don't well, think I will be. <laughs> why? Oh, because we uh, we're going to oh. to uh, Maddie's family events. Oh nice. my goodness! I've just loaded up sea breeze. Basically, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Sunday look good too, don't it? Doesn't it? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all less than ten knots for the rough and Melbourne. I think Sunday medium. and Monday are coming from the north too. Yeah, uh, there'll be plenty of boats out over the weekend. I'd be absolutely shocked if you didn't see some big tuna I'd coming be over the weekend. Absolutely shocked if you didn't yep. see me out there. I might have to give you your own rod that I borrowed <laughs> yes. and never brought back. Back. Yes. So um, I'm happy running a three three rod spread. <laughs> no, no, I'll give I, you your gear back, mate. I got an open open challenge for uh, Dave. Dave, 2022. <laughs> do you think it's going to be year of the 20 pounder snapper for you? No, I've snapper. given up on that long ago. <laughs> S- snapper no. season was. Quite terrible this year. I've got to be honest. I, I, I'm getting the itch. I, it always comes at this time in August. So it's, you just start, you, you miss snapper all of a sudden. Now, Joey, you sent us a screenshot of a picture of a snapper that we'd all seen three days before you sent it to us. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, the local report. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah from yeah. Uh, spot on. That's all right. Joe's yeah. getting excited. Yeah, I know. Look, if I did want to catch a 20 pounder, I'd go to Port Welsh pool, pool, spend like four to five days. At and I'd between, be confident in that space of time. Between two and three and you're on. I reckon you'd be a very good chance of a fish over 20 pounds. Yeah. But are we going to invest that much time and energy? No. Probably not. I'm, I'm into the uh, the plastics and... That's right. And the uh The mission this year is um, stuff. to get the Queenie out yeah. and uh, chuck some vibes and plastics. Yeah. You're, you're interested in your soft vibe that you've been showing me for a couple of years. I'm going to get one on this. Yes. And you never. No, I did. Remember, I cast it off my. Oh, yes. Cast, <laughs> thought I'd give it a go in Western Port and cast it off on the first cast. Yeah. It's like, how, how do you reckon that would go in um, Western Port? Um, you'd probably catch a lot of weed. Um, no, no. You catch snapper on lures. In yeah. On, on Towards the end of Slack Tide. Also, you cast, you around cast like, to, towards the anchor so you got time to let it sink and then. Yeah, also up around like Coronet Bay and stuff where there's not much current in the mud. I was going to say, what about like around the corals and, and whatnot, you know, and that's yep. sort of eight metres. Jesus, you sound like a bit of an expert there, Joe. You've absolutely nailed it. You just said his favourite number, eight. Eight metres. Yeah, mm. no, I've actually caught him there before. Have you? So very doable. Is that good for you? they gotta, they got to be <laughs> any, any burly or is El Natural? Um, El, Wow. You gotta go a fully fully plasticking, don't you? Yeah. You can't take Burley with you. Nah. No, well we did last If time. you're in Port Phillip <laughs> Bay, you'll you'll run two bait um rods in the holder while you're drifting. That's right. Yeah. But you know what? They didn't get one fish. It was just our plastics that caught fish. I know. Um, That's why I think we remove that little safety net and just go full on lures. Full just, on lures. Just commit, Adrian. Commit to the plastic dog. That's right. Just commit. Open up that fishery. Discover it. Discover it like we've invented it, like <laughs> yes. everything. Well, then you know, claim that we've invented it. Yeah. The snap are already there. You're just finding a different way to catch them. Exactly. Wow, I think plenty of people actually. <laughs> 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 we've caught quite a few on plastics there, but we, it's not just, just not something we've really concentrated on and done a lot of. But, yeah, something cool to look forward to in the coming months. Of course, 
there'll probably still be tuna around then too. So everyone's getting the snapper itch um, this this week. I was even having a chat to my dear Uncle Tony this oh, week. Uncle and he, Tones. And Uncle Tones, he was going, Jay, you better you better stay close to that Dave standing. Boy, we had the best <laughs> snapper session ever last last year in Coronet Bay. <laughs> Did you take his uncle out, Dave? No. No, no. Ah. He followed us out. Oh, oh, did he? Yeah. Did I know? Oh, Joe would have been secretly <laughs> no, texting no. his uncle. Goes, did I know that he followed us? <laughs> yeah, you did. Follow. I said, Sounds I said, like, I said, I said <laughs> see over there. Sounds like there's been a little bit of uh, undercover <laughs> spot stealing right. going I on. I reckon Joey. Joe's created some secret website like Salt Guide, but he's called it Joe Guide and he's put up <laughs> some, some of Dave's marks. <laughs> Joe Guide. <laughs> Cool, I'd subscribe to Joe God. Yeah. <laughs> it'd be, be, it'd be a cooking guy. Yeah, you just end up at like restaurants and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and his favorite, like his favorite delis. And- <laughs> Don't eat the seafood linguine at this one. Place. That's right. Um, <laughs> you got any uh, good recommendations of restaurants over in Geelong by any chance, Joe? Oh, Geelong. Oh, there's a nice wine bar with, uh, yeah, cheese platters Tappers, and all that sort of stuff. Your, your new sec- Ge- your Geelong sec- wine. Your new second home. Oh, uh, come on, mate. Yeah. Uh, Good idea. Uh, Joe's officially off the market, guys. We've removed all his applications to dating on the dark, Big Brother, Sex Island, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Sex Island? <laughs> Why wasn't I aware of that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that's on certain websites on the internet. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, it's done. Joey's off the market. Sorry, guys and gals. <laughs> no, nah, it's, all, it's all good. We're Joey's playing. very attractive. He, he might attract all, you know, Walks of life here. So. Oh my gosh! <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> what a way to end. <laughs> no, it's all good. Well done, Joey. Good to see that you've uh, found the love of your life, and Thanks, uh, we're going to wrap up tonight's I, I do, show. I do love his hoodie, though. It looks really warm. Look at this. <laughs> He's saying, he "Look at this," it. and it's saying, it. "Sick hook hunts." There's no you. I don't know where you got that from. Yeah, there's a hook in the Mate, middle. This there. is so warm, hook. this hoodie. I can't wait. Hey, an update on our King Kong Donkey Kong hoodies. Yes. Yes. So I've put together a list. I think we've got like 35 or 40 people have ordered them. Yeah. Um. So. Well, that, yeah, they've. Inter- they're interested in ordering one. Oh, well, they've requested. Yeah. yeah exactly. So now we just go to the screen printer. Can you make the fish interchangeable? Like, I want to change it from maybe a king to a tuna. Just, well, just Joey, for me we're working. No, Joe. Bloody hell. No, it's King Kong, Donkey Kong, Kingfish, we'll, we'll, Handler Man. We're releasing that one. We'll do, if there's enough yeah. interest, we'll do other ones down the track. Yeah. It's not like just some <laughs> simple swap of shit out and just swap the fish out. Just like, see, there's the everyone open, ignore open Joey exit. because we're going ahead with a king. It Kong costs too much to yeah. keep setting up multiple screen prints. Joe. No, I'm just, I'm just staring at. They, I'm, I'm a big fan of the kingfish, King Kong, Donkey Kong, and maybe Suraj is going to get his one meter king off the rocks this year. So I'm going to go with him. Well, just good drink his red hair too. Just drink red wine with him. Yeah, that's the reason you go. Wine and dine with Suraj. That's it. And his biryanis. He's a full a good moon, reality. mate. He loves the full moon. <laughs> and you could just dangle a live yakka um, off those rocks and and just have a kip. Bingo, bango. Yeah. Yes, that's right. All right. Well, thanks, boys. All right. Thank you, guys. We're just going to play. What's uh, up, you bloody legends? Thanks for listening to Win Against Tide again. That's it for another episode. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You'd be doing us a massive favor. Thanks, guys. Good episode, guys.